Welcome to the Wellness for Women show, where we talk about life, weight loss and everything in between. I'm Faye Caseman, founder of the AAA Way Life and Weight Loss Program, and I'm here to help you put together the pieces of life and weight loss for one last time. This is an episode of the Wellness for Women show, filmed live in the free Facebook group. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wellness for Women show, episode number 42. So what are we covering today is losing weight. Is it is so damn expensive or is it? So as humans, there are two things that always come up as a problem, no matter what it is that you are working on, time and money. And when it comes to weight loss, this is no exception. Our brains fear change when it perceives risk. Uh, it will throw a hissy fit and start bombarding you with a ton of thoughts and excuses to keep you away from the oncoming tigers. Losing weight is often thought of as a difficult process that requires a lot of dedication and hard work, but this is not necessarily true. What is also true sometimes, uh, what is also not true sometimes, is to call it costly. So when you look at the costs of healthy food and weight loss programs, it can seem at first glance that shedding pounds is an unaffordable luxury. And with a cost of living crisis on the horizon, many of us are feeling the pinch more than ever. But for starters, there are ways to lose weight without breaking the bank. And uh, also I want to try and bust out a couple of myths your brain could be telling you with regards to money, because sometimes value is not always aligned with cost. So, for example, a four pound cup of coffee could give you more value than a one pound chocolate bar if what you want in that moment is a glorious hit of Java, even though it's 300 percent, if my math is correct, more expensive. Whereas if you want some chocolatey goodness, then the chocolate may satisfy you more in that moment. Likewise, a cheap weight loss program may appear to give you more value, and that could be true if you actually have long term success on it. But it could be a waste of money if you quit and gain it all back if it wasn't something that was sustainable. So it'd be a bit of a loss leader, we'd call it in the commercial and the um, corporate world. And so um, we're going to dive into that a little bit more today. If you want access to the show notes, leave me hashtag show notes or check the description if you're listening on the podcast and uh, the links will be in there. So stay tuned till the end for some money saving tips um, that you can also try today. And also, if you've got any questions, then leave them under the video in the Wellness for Women group, and um, I will always circle back round and answer them. So for those who don't know me, I am Faye Casement, creator of the AAA Way Life and Weight Loss Program, where I can help you to ditch diets that keep you miserable and help you find weight loss success and food freedom. And if you want to know more about that, check out the links in the description or the comments, uh, depending on where you're catching this. So when it comes to weight loss, there are a lot of misconceptions about how much it can cost. Some people think that you have to spend a lot of money on healthy food, expensive products, expensive surgery and expensive gym memberships in order to see results. Um, but that's not necessarily the case, you know, and one one program um, doesn't necessarily have equal value to another program. And so it's really important to have a look at what it is that you are buying and getting yourself into effectively to make sure that it is value for money. Uh, so the key thing is not to let your perceptions of cost and the cost of weight loss from keeping you from reaching your goals, because that would be the really sad thing is if you just don't do anything at all because you do you think that you that you can't afford something or that it's going to be more expensive than it perhaps is or something. So it's about checking that your thinking is not stinking. And this is what we're going to do in the start of uh, the start of this episode. So let's look a little bit at value and cost. So let's explore for a minute the concept of money. So in life, we're constantly exchanging energy and money is a tool that we use to exchange energy. So believe it or not, money is a neutral thing until we apply our thoughts to it. So let me say that again. Money is a neutral thing until we apply our thoughts to it. Now, believe me, it took me a while to get my head around this bad boy as I had and still have quite a few money stories. Um, and they are really important to uncover and identify what your thoughts and feelings actually are with regards to money. 
and also um, weight loss, as we'll come on to in a little bit. So how we know this is true is by seeing how did people, how different people react to the same set of circumstances. So you could have one person who can look at the cost of an item and say, that's a bit expensive. And another one looks at the same thing with and has perhaps the same money in their bank, but says, wow, what a bargain. And the, the difference is, is that it comes down to each person's perception of that item and the benefit that they think that they're going to receive and the value they ultimately place on the thing in question. And because ultimately, if you think that it's something that's going to improve your life, make you feel better, then the value that you're going to place on it is going to be high. And therefore, if we're talking just purely about money, then the amount of money that you're willing to exchange for that um, may be greater, for example, because it wouldn't be less of an issue because of the value that you are getting. So, for example, you may think nothing about spending £100 on a new outfit, a night out on the town, your favourite perfume or makeup, the latest gadget. Um, you perhaps think, you know, you've been working hard, you deserve it. And therefore, the £100 on whatever it might be would be totally worth it because in your mind, you're telling yourself how much you want it. You might, however, decide to trade that for spending it for something else, because you might see that that isn't going to provide you with the value that you actually want in the long term. And likewise, if you are shorter on money, you may have to weigh up whether that outfit, the trip out, the latest gadget, etc. is really worth it. You know, or will that outfit just sit in your wardrobe? Will the night out really be true value for money? So don't get me wrong. I'm all for joy, happiness and living your life. I stand for joy. I want people to have more joy in their life. It's part of what I want from people is to be able to use weight loss as a means of finding more joy and more um more enjoyment in life through um like the coaching side of it basically so i have been there though i have spent plenty of money to make myself feel better uh, i have a whole room of craft supplies i have wardrobes full of stuff that i don't wear that i've gathered over the years um so again i'm you know and i'm not trying to be rude here about you know because obviously i appreciate that money is a really um difficult situation for a lot of people at the moment um and again there are some dire straits possibly looming around the corner so all i'm all i'm really suggesting is that sometimes we just have to weigh up what we are spending money on and obviously if things are um more dire for you at the moment then obviously make sure that you're reaching out and getting appropriate support from wherever you can get that support from um all i'm wanting us to check in on today really is making sure that there is no limiting beliefs there with regards to money or situations around money that are creating, um, you know, like unconscious biases effectively that are bought, that are sat there out of habits or old stories that you've had that are perhaps holding you back when they don't need to be. That's basically what we're trying to cover today. Uh, so then you've got the value of weight loss. So one of the other big problems that we can have when it comes to looking after, our, you know, looking to work on weight loss or even well-being is, is that we can often place quite a low value on it, really. It can be perceived as a short term thing or a bit like the outfit in the wardrobe, you know, and that's understandable because if you've had years of yo-yo dieting and thinking that you can't lose weight or that it's got to be done through deprivation or fad diets that make you feel bad, you may believe that you'll never be able to stick to a weight loss plan. So what's the point, you know? But again, all of these stories and perceptions potentially are untrue. There is no real reason that stops you from losing weight unless you genuinely have um you know a medical condition that genuinely does prevent it but even then some of the harder ones like Hashimoto's for example or um PCOS you know things that can impact weight loss menopause doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be able to lose weight it just means you've got to figure out the right way for you and your body so when you lose weight in a way that feels good though and that is sustainable and a way that you can stick with long term and when you give value to your weight loss journey and give it the importance it deserves, you're more likely to stick to it and see results as well, which, of course, is going to build momentum and motivation. And as I said last week, the journey is really where the value is. It is what can help you to realise how unstoppable you can be, you know, and with the right method for you, the success that you will have will lead to having success in other areas of your life. Um, success in the ability to 
attract more money, you know, whether that be through less time off because of your health, so less sick pay, uh, increased confidence, promotions, working on your business, changing careers, you know, those kind of things that can bring in money, as well as um, using life coaching techniques, you know, so for example, you might recognise that you do have a little problem with your spending. Um, and certainly, like I say, spending habits is something that I've worked on, as well as weight loss. Um, you know, Amazon's had to go and find other people to have shares nowadays. <laughs> um, and so it's all about what you place um, importance on and what, what value um, you perceive. And so how can you increase the value you place on weight loss and your well-being? Well, you can, and number one, get clear on your why. Why do you want to lose weight? What will it give you? How will it make you feel? How would you, you know, what would your life be like if you were at your goal weight? How would life be different for you? You have to raise the necessity level um, because this in turn will increase your motivation and chances of success. Again, that runs through everything that you want to do. You've got to get really, really clear and visualize what it is that you want to achieve and what that's going to bring you. Number two, you can learn as much as you can about uh, losing weight in a healthy and sustainable way. The more you know, the more confident you will feel and the more value you will then place on that journey and that process. Number three, you can find a mentor who has walked the walk. Look for someone who's achieved what you wanted to achieve and learn from them. Um, you know, what did they do to get there? Now, I'd, of course, love that to be me. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I just want you to find your own way on your journey. You know, and you've got to find the right person that's for you. But I think it is important to have somebody or something because weight loss can be quite a lonely journey on your own. Number four, work on your thoughts about investing on, in yourself. You know, you deserve to reach your goals and dreams. When you invest in yourself, you're increasing the value you place on your journey and showing yourself that you are worth it because you are worth it, just like L'Oreal says. Um, and I did do the other episode with regards to uh, the importance of investing in yourself. So that one's uh, worth a listen as well. And uh, lastly, on that point, making sure that, again, you celebrate your wins. I know I say it a lot, but it's so important, you know, setting small process goals, uh, ticking them off with glee. You know, this is all what helps you to see the value. Um, and, you know, you could do that via a win tracker. So that's like some of the things that I've got in the AAA Way program. I've got trackers that can help you to track track your wins. Um doesn't have to be anything fancy like that you can just uh, just have a piece of paper and a tally sheet if you want to uh so takeaway point number one hopefully is or the takeaway point is don't let the, your perceptions of the value of weight loss or any old money stories or anything like that keep you back from your goals um you can find a way if you want something badly enough um and you know and and dig deep for some resourcefulness ultimately and again this goes for everything everything and anything it doesn't necessarily just have to be weight loss I'm obviously here talking about weight loss but you know these these um, principles apply to whatever it is that you want to work on so I also promised some practical cost saving tips because again you know um, even if you ha have a lot of abundance and a lot of money at the moment, you know, because um, not necessarily everybody is going to feel the pinch this winter, um, then it doesn't still hurt to do, again, some of these practical tips because, you know, it doesn't hurt to be more efficient with our money. So tip number one, do a little life audit. So in line with what I was just talking about, really, it's about checking in on your priorities, check that, you know, whatever it is that you are um doing right now is helping you that's that's putting you towards um the place where you want to be in your life whatever that might be uh if you're not sure it's the kind of thing that coaching can help with uh i do it periodically um myself i talk to my coaches about it too i talk to my accountability groups so all really really important stuff you could cut back on eating out you know eating out can be a bit of a budget buster uh sometimes those small things add up you know having a coffee every day it could be you know perhaps about four pound a day so you know 20 quid a week um over a five day week 
um you know you've got meal deals that you perhaps get enticed into buying when perhaps actually you don't need a full meal deal when you could take your lunches um and this is before we get into the cost of takeouts and actual actual meal outs uh so they're definitely something to have a look at um there's plenty of recipes out there for fakeaways and all these kind of things um that I actually think are really quite good. But again, it's looking at the thoughts and feelings that go with all of these, because maybe actually eating out really does bring you a lot of joy and that's something that you want to keep, you know. So there's no right or wrong reasons. It's just, you know, making sure that you've thought about it and had a look at it and decided what works and isn't going to work for you. Uh, number three, shop for sales and discounts on healthier food. So, you know, healthy food doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. Sometimes it pays to get a little bit creative in the food department, whether it is looking at the sales or shopping at um, more budget supermarkets. And, you know, so you can still save money whilst still eating well. Um, you can always check out my Pinterest. I have lots of food boards on there as well. Lots of recipes uh, and also ideas for um you know budget meals and that kind of thing you can number four you can reduce portion sizes so at the end of the day i do not encourage starvation in order to lose weight um but just eating a little less than normal at your meal time um might be what all it takes in order to lose weight that's all i've done is i've just played about with quantity and quality uh, but obviously in doing so it also means that there is that cost saving there because uh, as one of my my coach used to say that ultimately when you're overeating effectively it's a waste because you're eating more than your body actually needs and so therefore that could have been a cost saving uh, number five, eliminate food waste. So uh, I recommend that my day, my members make a realistic plan, uh, certainly daily, uh, ideally weekly, so that you can gather awareness about your weight loss. But it does also help eliminate with food waste. Um, I'm terrible for going to the supermarket. And if I don't go, if I haven't made a food plan, it all just goes into the trolley. And then it all ends up in the freezer of doom. <laughs> the freezer of doom is a chest freezer, which is absolutely rammed full of food because I have not controlled the way that I shop basically and then it goes in the freezer of doom and then it, I don't even know what's in there so you know uh, I'm going to add another tip there if you've got a freezer get in it <laughs> find out what's in it and eat that before you buy anything more fresh um number six get active for free you don't need to join an expensive gym membership that you may never use. Um, if you're going to use it and get value for it, great. But there are other low cost ways, whether that be supporting your local exercise class owner or joining an online membership. I have a few friends who run these. Uh, you saw Leah who came in and did the yoga. She runs an online yoga membership, for example. Um, I've got another um, another couple of friends who I could probably signpost to as well. If you fitness was your thing, it's not um, it's not something that I'll be um, actively putting in my membership. So you know, um, check them out. Uh, you can hit up YouTube, of course, and other free sources of um, exercise. They are also good. You can build your own exercise plans. You don't need any specialist equipment. Um, and even just going for a walk is um, perfectly good exercise. Uh, number seven, drink plenty of water. Water is essential for proper digestion and metabolism, both of which are crucial for weight loss. So making sure that you're drinking the right amount of um, water for your body per day. Um, but also, again, that could actually sa save you some money because it, it does naturally keep you a little bit fuller and a bit more sustained. And therefore, again, you might then not hit up the vending machine at work or go to the calf for that extra uh, pastry or whatever it is, you know, for your afternoon lull. So, again, you know, it's surprising where you can actually save money just by working on your weight loss. Number eight, look at cheaper cooking methods. Uh, so I believe microwave, air fryers, these can be a little bit cheaper to run than your whole oven. Uh, slow cookers can also be great for the number of meals that you can create in one go, helping with batch cooking and meal prep, which again could be then food that you take to work. Uh, number nine, comparing brands. So this again goes for all food items, but especially things like coffee, jars, cans, snacks, you know, these are all where there can be different, big differences in cost. Um, 
Asda, if you've got an Asda near to you, they've just put out um, a budget range, which is all really good. I've tried quite a bit of that. So again, you know, head there. Number 10, use the resources in this group and the podcast. So at the end of the day, I am looking to provide you with free content every week. I want as many people as they can um, to use that. You know, I've got no issue at all with you lapping it up or, or lapping it all up for free as long as you're taking the action. You know, and yes, I've got a range of services um, that you can tap into. And yes, they're chargeable. But I'm and I've got a range of those, you know, for, for all budgets, um, you know, but you don't you don't necessarily have to i'd love that you did but you could just um you can just use the free stuff and there's a lot of free podcasts and youtubes and all these kind of things that if you really aren't able to dive in right now then just just use the just use the free stuff but when you want to take it further or if you need that extra support then that's when you can start looking for a program that suits you i say hope that's me but if it's not me that's also fine you know um Okay, so in conclusion, I say in this episode, I covered a few things, some learning points really about the fact that we can have a lot of misconceptions when it comes to the value of money, the value of weight loss, um, talked about the fact that we don't necessarily need to lose, spend a lot of money to lose weight, and there are affordable ways of doing that. Uh, we can also get more resourceful, we can do life audits, that kind of thing to see whether there's places where we can um make changes in our life meaning that we can do move move more stuff towards well-being and away from perhaps things that aren't what we want to focus on um and so again it was really about number one takeaway being about making sure that you're checking your thinking isn't stinking and that it's not keeping you back because often a lot of the thoughts that we have aren't always true um and there are usually more ways and means than we think of achieving a goal and lastly, um, I shared some tips there on what you can do in order to reduce the cost of your weight loss journey. So as usual, if you want to get the most out of these videos, make sure you're leaving hashtag gem under the video. Let me know what resonates with you. Ask any questions and uh, I will love you and leave you and I will see you all next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, if you want to boost your life and weight loss the AAA way, check out the relevant links for today's show in the description. Speak soon.